subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates at a time when the covid-19 pandemic is raging across the country a separate but important series of development is taking place both in nagaland as well as the center um, in uh, the national capital of delhi a delegation of the national socialist council of nagalim isak moiva which is the largest of the political the armed political groups in nagaland have reached uh, new delhi on friday in what is said to be um, you know uh, an internal meeting which will be taking place with their general secretary uh, th moiva Now here we have with us in Dimapur today uh, V Horam the executive member of the steering committee of the NSCN IM who will be telling us about the agenda of these talks as well as there have been a lot of speculations about these talks being escalated to the last leg of the peace talks which have been transpiring you know in the last few years between the center and these political groups so uh, Horam Mr Horam will illuminate what the nature of these talks will be as well as um the, the series of events that have been transpiring in the state and their impact on these discussions and talks that will take place welcome to the print mr hora no oh, thank you yeah so my first question uh, to you is about um, last year the the peace talks had ended with a sort of impasse between the um, nsc and im and the center but the mha in that sense had said at that time that consultation will be required from the other parties in arunachal manipur as well as as assam so what is the agenda of your internal meeting right now and are you hoping that there will be more talks with the center on this issue of course uh, last year uh, on 31st october uh, you see uh, what the government of india was saying is, is that it has to end there the the solution has to end there and we have been all along uh, you know expressing our concern that you know you cannot just fix up a date for the solution because it's a question of whether both the sides come to an agreement or not if we don't come to an agreement setting date would not work so uh, that was how things were even then we said all right we just uh, agreed but after 31st we said before the final signing is done why not we revisit the frame agreement and the you know the subsequent uh, uh, you see the um, the relationship the new relationship that we have worked out between us which we call as competencies mm -hmm. okay so that we it was from both the sides government of india as well as from the nsn that we revisit that one final uh, touch mm -hmm. in a sense just we touch mm -hmm. so in that retouch what happened is that r and ravi started interpreting things mm -hmm. out of the blue mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. in that agreement it was given that uh, you see the inclusiveness mm -hmm. inclusiveness means inclusiveness with we just have one issue and there'll be only one uh, solution yes. irrespective of how many you know naga political organizations there are mm -hmm. so you see across the land and breadth of nagalim whether you know the territory falls in the so called mm -hmm. arunachal pradesh assam or manipur or myanmar or you know in nagaland but of course present we are discussing uh, what lies within the so called indian side so inclusiveness means inclusive of all these people mm -hmm. the territories mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. the solution is for all mm -hmm. it's not just confined to us not just confined to particular area mm -hmm. so that was the meaning of that inclusiveness and now arun ravi was trying to interpret that inclusiveness means all of this will be included within the parameter of indian constitution okay. a solution under indian constitution that's what he meant by inclusiveness there we had a real differences yeah. okay that was the major shift 
the paradigm shift that he had, and because of which, you see, the you know gradually it developed the kind of the, the, some certain stalemate between us, and thereafter, you see, he he started coming up with you know branding the Naga national political mm -hmm. groups as the gangsters, you know the the political groups mm -hmm. with whom. Government of India is having ceasefire, bilateral ceasefire, and also political talks engaged in peace process. And where he is the president, is he the, the uh, interlocutor? And he was saying, he was branding this Naga, you know, political organizations as uh, gangsters. Look at that double standard he has. On the one hand, he's having peace talks, political talks with the same people. On the other hand, he says, these are the gundas, these are the, you know, the, the gangsters. So with all these things, gradually, you know, uh, we were not happy at all. And then after that, one after another, you know, profiling came again, okay? Profiling of the national workers. What is he going to do? See, I'm telling you, if you just go to any single Naga household and ask them at your, you know, uh, any of your family members, being, you know, one who has given service to the Naga national movement, you'll find every single Naga family having given service one way or the other. So if, if he wants to do profiling, he has to do the profiling of all the Nagas, four million Nagas. What kind of a joke is that? So, you know, he was doing all these things side by side while trying, I mean, to work out the final solution with us. And because of his, you see, this lack of sincerity, we have reasons not to be happy with him. We're not happy with him. Uh, presently, of course, seeing this, that we are hurt, uh, I'm sure the government of India is already aware of that. And uh, he was also called up to Delhi. I, uh, what transpires between him and the uh, Prime Minister, uh, I don't know, but then he was called up for the same reasons, I know. So, I'm sure the government of India is also not pleased with the way he is handling the situation. Certainly, talks have to be there, it has to continue, and uh, uh, solution has to be worked out through peaceful means. That is for sure. But the actual, you know, uh, date as uh, fixed by certain persons that it is to be announced on the 15th, um, you know, of uh, August. Sometimes you say, you know, the, the solution will be there as a Christmas gift. <laughs> what kind of a gift is that going to be? This is a political issue, not a kind of a birthday gift or Christmas gift, uh, in, not Indian independence gift, not like that. So we won't be determined by, predetermined by any date. But, you know, how long will it go depends on how we come together at the meeting point. So I'll pick up on various strands of what you said. Um, firstly, um, you talked about uh, Governor Ravi, the interlocutor of the talks, and his sort of affront to what you say, you know, the NSE and IM and, and the other political groups currently in the state in which he had written short of this letter to the chief minister uh, uh, calling, you know, this situation in Nagaland as a precarious law and order situation. And uh, you, on your behalf, the group uh, itself wrote in a press release that this is creating a trust deficit with the center. So what impact do you see this having, this exchange having on the peace talks itself? Is it something that you will take up very strongly with the center now? You see, uh, uh, you know, when the Nagas and India were engaged fiercely in the you know, exchange of firing, so many people got killed. Uh, the Nagas were forced to resist. So that's how things started uh, with the invasions of India. 
Now, having gone through this for decades and decades and decades, and more than 250,000 Nagas dead, you see, uh, the then uh, chief of the Indian Army, General Shankar Roy Chaudhary, mm -hmm. and quite a few other generals said, Naga issue is political issue. Since it is political in nature, mm -hmm. it has to be resolved politically, mm -hmm. not militarily. Mm -hmm. So there is no military solution. We have tried for decades and decades. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. So, see, out of that so-called trying to, you know, suppress that, the movement as a law and order uh, case, they failed. So at last, with the admittance that it is not a law and order situation where the police force or military force has to contain it. No. So uh, with that kind of, uh, you know, uh, admittance, uh, you know, the government of India took up this and P.V. Uh, Narasimha uh, Rao, then see the Prime Minister of India, he invited us and, the, you know, that's how the talks began. And we had come a long way. And after so many years of talks and ceasefire, after 23 years of ceasefire and talks, after having achieved even the, the framework agreement, now Ravi is going to try to take the whole thing back to square one, where he's now telling us that this is a law and order case. Law and order means what? needing military solution. That is what it is. Law and order is that, you know, by military force, by police force. So this is what he meant. So how can we say yes to that? And this is extremely serious to us. He wants to take us back to that fighting days. No, we don't want that. We are looking for peace. And because of which we are very serious on this issue. We're very serious on this issue. Because, uh, you know, this is a joint effort being given by uh, both government of India and the Naga people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the interlocutor is, you know, not uh, given uh, the freedom to do whatever he feels mm -hmm. like. He cannot do that. It's a joint venture, mm -hmm. see. So he, he must treat cautiously. Mm -hmm. You see, with all due respect to Ravi, yeah. there are various areas we, where we highly appreciate he is, you know, he has lots of his contributions in as far as the framework agreement is concerned. Mm -hmm. Because after he took over, uh, you know, the pace of the talks became much faster, okay? Mm -hmm. And that culminated to uh, the fra uh, signing of the framework agreement. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have so many areas where we uh, highly appreciate him. And so I go back to the status of the peace talks itself. Yes. Where does it stand right now? Because after um, the 31st last year of mm. October, mm. there's been no such news on mm. what has been agreed on. The details of the framework of agreement, it was being said, was still um, being hashed out. So where does this talk stand right now? Okay, see, the, the actually what we're coming to a conclusion is the framework agreement uh, where the uh, competencies are also worked out in accordance with that. That will determine the new relationship between us. Mm. You see, new relationship will mean as against the existing status quo. Okay. okay, so new relationship. And if, you know, Ravi or somebody keep on talking about Nagas being uh, to be under Indian constitution, that is new, not new relationship. That is old relationship as they are claiming. That is status quo. Mm -hmm. But we have agreed to move on, mm -hmm. okay, with the new relationship. And this new relationship would be, you see, where the formula is where the rights of the Nagas are recognized and the security concern of India is addressed okay so it's, it's a win-win for both and that was agreed upon and uh, you see we'll have a peaceful coexistence of the two entities okay with 
shared sovereignty. Now, all these things clearly denote that see, we, we will not accept Indian constitution. We don't accept Indian constitution. We won't accept. And we don't accept to be under Indian Union, but we will coexist with Indian Union. That is, the, that is it. That is it. So, and when we talk about that, whether it be flag, whether it be constitution, mm -hmm. whether it be whatever, whatever, everything is inclusive. Everything's included there. Okay. Everything is included. So without flag, without constitution, it is not complete. And we are not going to compromise on that. We have told them that without constitution and without flag, it is not honorable and not acceptable to us. The government of India has been saying, you see, why not you use uh, the word Yezabo in your own dialect? That's what we we use. We said definitely we will use both Yezabo, which is constitution, and we will use Yezabo and constitution. So that was one thing they said. Otherwise, you use by law. Okay, Russia is using that. Israel is using it. So we said no. That may be suitable for them, but it is not suitable for us, because the fact is that if that is the case, then we'll have uh, bylaws of the Nagas and the Constitution of India. So we said no. So it it has to be Constitution of the Nagas. Constitution would have to be there, and Naga national flag has to be there because. That is very important. Uh, we have been having this struggle for so many years under the banner of that flag. Mm -hmm. And no Naga is going to compromise on that. Okay. Yes. So in the talks that will happen in the future, do you expect this to be the main agenda, taking up the flag and constitution? Definitely, definitely. This would be, you know, n not the only, you know, important, but this certainly will be one of those important ones. What would be the other important? No, no, no. That will come as <laughs> as the discussion goes. <laughs> okay. And also, I'll have to close, um, you know, and uh, close this interview with this question because we're dealing in such unusual times. Mm -hmm. How has the COVID nineteen pandemic affected your group? Um, given that you live separately, you have a you know, mm. headquarters in Dimapur, mm. um, in Hebron. So, how have your group? How has your group been dealing with this situation? And uh, as well as, how has this situation impacted the peace talks? Right? Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, the pace of the uh, talks has been affected, no doubt, hmm. uh, because the frequent meetings cannot be held uh, as on regular days. Um, at, at the same time, you see, as far as the COVID is concerned, uh, we have a health ministry, and uh, the health ministry, the health minister, one uh, Mr. Uh, Anthony Yanthan, who is the minister of health, uh, according to the directive of the WHO, all the SOPs were all followed, strictures all passed down, and then uh, all sanitization programs, then uh, on the you know gates, uh, movement restrictions has been really uh, done, and then uh, interviews for the collective leadership is totally banned for several months now, and uh, uh, that's from our government. And then uh, even uh, you know the hand sanitizers, uh, the mask, you know, and then uh, awareness campaigns. Uh, this has all been done. Uh, we have been doing that. And so, so um, when can we expect a conclusion with the peace talks? Mm -hmm. When will there be a good news? <laughs> well, uh, it's very difficult to say um, about the particular time, but both the sides are giving our best effort to uh, come to a conclusion at the, at the earliest time possible. But whatever that is, that should be honorable and acceptable to both the sides not kind of imposed or, you know, dictated solution. 
that will take forever. Okay. It will never happen. So it depends on how both sides accommodate and uh, see to the reality of the problem. Okay.